The hexatonic scale is the black sheep of the pressing scales. It's by far used the least in music out of all the other pressing scales, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't learn about it and try to implement it ourselves. I'm Jay Beard and I make videos about Scriabin and music theory. Check out my website to see the courses and lessons that I offer and please like, comment, and subscribe. In this third episode on the pressing scales, we're going to learn about the properties of the hexatonic scale, mostly using examples from Scriabin's eighth sonata, and we'll learn about its subsets down to four note sets. Sometimes I'll show diagrams that show the relationship between a subset and the other pressing scales. For example, this diagram shows us that the 420 set is not only part of the hexatonic set, 620, but also lies within 732, the harmonic set, and 735, the diatonic set. This allows us to see if a set is exclusive to a particular superset, or whether it's shared among several other supersets. The term cardinality simply refers to the number of notes in a set. The hexatonic scale and the whole tone scale both have a cardinality of 6, because they're made up of 6 pitches. Now let's get into all this at the whiteboard. While the whole tone scale covered last episode is made up of two augmented chords a whole step apart, we can think of the hexatonic scale as being made up of two augmented chords a half step apart from each other. It's often referred to as the augmented scale for this reason. Another way to think of its structure is as a repeating plus three plus one semitone structure. And it has another mode which is plus one plus three repeating. It contains three lines of symmetry and is limited to four unique transposition levels, meaning when it's transposed four semitones away, it maps onto itself. It contains the following concentration of intervals which are mostly consonant, but its symmetry and three half steps make it sound dissonant overall. Scriabin uses the entire hexatonic set briefly in his eighth sonata, moving from an E mystic chord to a hexatonic set built on F. The entire set is played by simply outlining an augmented chord with minor sixth leaps, with two voices a minor third apart from each other. It's such an effective use of the set because the minor sixth leaps come from the established theme one motif, and by doubling the motif a minor third away we get the same expected motif reharmonized to a strange set that fits with the enigmatic sound of the rest of the piece. There's only one five note subset of the hexatonic scale, and that's 521. It contains the same saturation of intervals as the hexatonic set, but by removing one pitch, the symmetry is broken, which allows this set to be transposed uniquely to all 12 pitches. This is the set that Scriabin uses in theme one of Sonata 8. When I hear those five notes walking down, I imagine an ancient mysterious relic being uncovered. Here's one of my favorite uses of that part of the motif being used. This set certainly contributes to the enigmatic sound of the sonata, but does that mean Scriabin was thinking of this set as a subset of the hexatonic scale? The only pressing sets that this set lies within are the hexatonic set and the harmonic set, and we do see a few instances of the harmonic set in this sonata, but there's actually a stranger answer. This 521 set is used as a subset of 6E44, a set outside of the pressing scales containing a cluster of two consecutive semitones. I explain this set in more depth in my video analyzing Scriabin's eighth sonata. Here's a passage where the theme one motif is played while the overall harmony is set 6Z44. This shows us that Scriabin went as far as pioneering sets beyond the pressing scales. Among four note sets we have the 417 set which we might call a major minor chord. It's quite dissonant and difficult to implement, but we see Scriabin use this set a lot in Sonata 7, as this set is also a subset of the octatonic scale. Next we have 419, which is a really important chord to learn that's a subset of many pressing scales, but not the diatonic set. It's like an augmented chord with an added pitch a half step away from any of the other pitches. 
When a pitch is added to the right side of the augmented chord, it's 419A, which is commonly used as a minor major 7th chord. When a pitch is added to the left side, it's 419B, often used as an augmented major 7th chord. We can hear both of these inversion pairs used as passing chords in Scriabin 42-5. While Scriabin uses 419 similarly to how an augmented chord would be used in passing, it can also be used as a stable consonant chord like the last chord of the James Bond theme song. The 420 set is the major 7th chord set. I don't think I need to show a musical example of it being used, but it's worth pointing out its interval content. I have a video on how the intervals that make up sets relates to how smooth chord changes sound at the transposition levels of those intervals, and since the major 7th chord contains no whole steps or tritones, there are no retained pitches at those transpositions, making it sound like an abrupt chord change. The two major thirds and two fourths present in the set lend themselves to smooth transpositions at those transposition levels, which is why it's common to hear major seventh chords transposed a fourth or major third away. The last set to mention is 4-7, which is like two major thirds a half step away. This is the most dissonant four-note hexatonic subset containing the most half-steps, and it doesn't sound consonant as a chord. It's used more as a melody, and we can think of it as the last four notes of the harmonic minor scale. Not every musical structure sounds agreeable, even within the pressing scales. In fact, the first three pressing scales we're covering lend themselves to dissonance because they're made of repeating patterns that create symmetry. In other words, a set like the diatonic set is made up of complex interval patterns where half steps are sprinkled throughout creating a mixture of intervals, while the hexatonic is simply a repeating pattern of minor thirds and half steps. That sort of repetitive pattern creates a saturation of specific intervals and symmetry that ultimately sounds dissonant. Though the hexatonic scale hasn't been used much by composers already, I would challenge viewers to try to apply its unique dissonance. It could be used as a dissonant passing chords, or we could use the 521 set to capture most of its character but with a more consonant, non-symmetrical structure. Even though the entire set played together is dauntingly dissonant, its inner subsets contain a range of beautiful common sets to non-typical dissonant sets, and everything in between. In the next episode in the series, we're going to cover the octatonic scale, but first, what's your favorite subset of the hexatonic scale? Let me know in the comments, check out my website, join the Discord, and please like, comment, and subscribe.